Hi, I'm Mr. Simons and in this video we're going to look at what causes inflation. In terms of what causes inflation, there are five different causes that we're going to look at in this video. In terms of thinking about inflation, that we look at it happening from the demand side, the supply side, from people's thinking side, from overseas side, and also from the government side. So we're going to tackle each of these five in going through this video. Our first form of inflation is called demand pull, right? And it's just as it sounds. Higher demand pulls up prices in an economy. And what we're particularly looking at is aggregate demand. So remember that aggregate demand is total demand in an economy. It's the sum of all those individual demand curves. So demand pull inflation occurs when the level of spending, aggregate demand, is greater than how much an economy can produce its level of output. That is aggregate supply. So if we're thinking about it, this is the relationship that aggregate demand exceeds aggregate supply, and then that pulls prices up. This is because more money, more demand, is chasing after the same amount of goods. This is a really good quote to keep in terms of talking about demand pull. And so consumers who can't live without these goods or services bid up the prices of goods and services, which leads to higher prices. So what we're going to do now is we're going to draw demand pull. And just remember that aggregate demand is going to get larger if any of the components of aggregate demand increase. And the components are So let's go and let's draw the diagram. Okay, so now let's draw demand pull inflation. So you can see I've got the sort of the regular axes here in terms of talking about the whole economy. We've got the general price level and total output because we're talking about we're talking about the whole economy now, not one demand curve, but all of the demand curves. If we're thinking about demand pull inflation, what has happened has, is that uh, one component of aggregate demand or many components have increased. And so what that means is that the whole aggregate demand curve will shift. So if we're thinking about AD, it could be any of these factors or a combination that have increased. Let's draw this shift now with demand pull. So if a component of aggregate demand goes up, that's going to be an increase in aggregate demand, which will shift the aggregate demand curve to the right. So we can see that when aggregate demand increases, this will result in prices going up, and this shows demand pull inflation. Okay, so now we're going to look at cost push inflation. And just as it sounds like, this is what happens. that the high cost of production pushes up prices in an economy. So it's related to producers, the people that make the stuff in the economy. So what we're talking about with cost push is that it is related to the supply side of the economy and aggregate supply. So the idea is that higher production costs will result in lower aggregate supply. Because if it's more expensive to produce, then producers will produce less. And then, when there's less aggregate supply, well, consumers are going to experience higher prices. So if we think about cost push, there's a number of, of different causes that lead to higher production costs for producers. Types of things include rising wages, rising raw material costs, energy prices, rising rents, any of these inputs 
into production going up in price will increase the costs of production for firm. So if we're thinking about cost push, let's go ahead and draw it. And what I'd like you to do is think about cost push, supply side, producers, firms. Okay, this is what it relates to. Aggregate supply. So let's draw it. So now we're going to draw cost push inflation. Cost push where the cost of production increases those prices. So we're looking at aggregate supply. And the important thing is the perspective is from this. Okay, so let's draw it up. Now, the important thing to remember is that if production costs go up, firms are going to produce less because it's more expensive to make goods and services. So rather than aggregate supply increasing, which would in fact reduce prices, aggregate supply is going to decrease, shift to the left, which will actually increase prices. Okay, the third cause of inflation is inflationary expectations. And the idea here is this of a self-fulfilling prophecy. And you can use this term in economics, it's pretty accepted in terms of inflation. And the idea is that if people expect prices will go up, they will, ex uh, they will act in a way that will result in prices going up. If workers are concerned about inflation, higher prices, well, they're going to seek higher wages to deal with those higher prices. And if workers get higher wages, okay, that's going to increase production costs. So firms will produce less, which will result in higher prices anyway. So the idea about inflationary ex expectations is people will act in a way that will result in inflation occurring anyway. Okay, another cause of inflation, it's what's known as imported inflation. And as you can see over here, that imported inflation comes from overseas. It is brought into the Australian economy and it increases prices in the economy. So for example, if import prices become more expensive, then that's going to increase the prices of different goods and services in Australia. So an increase in import prices will lead to higher domestic prices for consumers because their pair of Air Max 90s are now going to be more expensive or for businesses because some of the things they get from overseas to help them with production, like their fancy Italian cheeses, are then going to increase in price, increase the costs for consumers, increase inflation in the economy. The other imported inflation bit is in terms of the value of the Australian dollar. So if the Australian dollar is weaker, that means imports are going to be more expensive, which will lead to higher prices in the domestic economy. If the Australian dollar is weaker, imports, M, will be more expensive, which will lead to higher prices again for consumers and businesses. The final bit of imported inflation relates to oil prices. So oil and energy, such an important input for many businesses and households. So if oil prices go up, well, that's going to increase a lot of different prices in the domestic economy. So the final cause of inflation is what the government does. So the actions of the government could also increase different prices in the economy. So for example, if the government decides to put on various different sales taxes or what we call excise duty, or if it puts taxes on imports, both of these here will lead to... If the government decides to get involved in deregulation and reducing rules and restrictions, well that could actually have the opposite effect. That could make it easier and cheaper to do business, which could reduce prices. And this final point, if the government decides to increase the prices of the very service it offers to people in society, well, then that also is going to increase prices because there are higher prices 
and that will also be inflationary. So what the government does is also another cause of inflation. So in this video, we've had a look at the main causes of inflation. Very important, you know these five well, and you could draw demand pull and cost push. Thanks again for watching. Make sure to subscribe, maybe leave me a comment, um, and I look forward to providing you more economic knowledge with another video. Okay, thanks for your time.